Yo, I'm going to tell you something. It ain't nothing like the black church. I don't care what religion you are. I don't care what you practice. If you want to experience something, something different and something new, go to a black church. Go, 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 go to a, a Baptist church. Go to a Pentecostal church. Go to a church where they uh, feel that spirit for real. Like that's, there's always going to be something. And see, when I came out here to uh, L.A., and, you know, I came from the Baptist church. And, you know, in the South, preachers put a lot into their sermons. They think about it. They write it. But now everything is like microwave. So I remember coming out here. I'd be sitting out in the thing, and you hear something. You know, they're not original. So they would come up, you know, today's sermon is, y'all going to make me lose my mind. And you'd be like, wait a minute. I know I didn't hear this somewhere before. This is not his shit. And now... It's to the point where when I go, I kept my phone and I, I, shaz I start shazamming motherfuckers. I like, wait a minute. I shazam. Hey, man, that's not your shit. And who, who is that out there? It's me, the brother in the third row. Do your original shit. You can't be doing other people's shit. So, you know, I just started, you know, it's a lack of creativity out there now. So. Oh, man. Oh, man. Okay. Yo, you, you know, I did not know it in. This is crazy because before we got on the call, I was just, um, or before we got in, 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 into this interview, I was just doing some research on you. I didn't know you was a Q. Yeah, yeah, you know, that's why I, I wear purple. I wear so much Q stuff that, you know, my wife is like, look, every interview you go on, everything you got. So now I'm doing, I'm just representing Alabama State University, HBCU. I graduated from Alabama State University, but I still got on the purple and stuff, you know, so. You know, my wife is trying to say, hey, you every you can't represent every time you do something, especially Why not? You know, when you're going to be cursing and stuff like that or whatever. So now I just kind of, you know, I kind of scale back. You know, I, I, I sat down with Brother Roland Martin and uh, first and foremost, what year did you pledge? Uh, you know, it's interesting. I actually uh, I should have crossed in like 92, 93 at Alabama State University. But the cues were suspended on the on the yard, so I didn't get a chance to cross. So I went back to school and uh, and got my degree while I was here in mm. uh, in 2014. And once I got my degree from Alabama State University, and that's I always I use that to say it's never too late in life, man. The two things that I always wanted in life, I always wanted a degree. And I always wanted to be a part of Omega Sci Fi Fraternity Incorporated. So I went back to school, got my degree, and then I crossed in uh, 2015. Got you. Okay, so I sat with Roland, and and as you know, he is a, a member oh. of AFIA. Um, and, and what I'll give him credit is he always supports and bigs up the Divine Nine. Absolutely. Um, very Absolutely. much so. But he had a very interesting take. I think he told me he went over in spring 89. And in spring 89, it, the, the pledge process was so different than it is today. And he was like, you know what? I never got touched. I never got hazed. And I'm proud of it. There, there was never one day that, matter of fact, I'm going to go so far as to say, he said when, when one of his big brothers tried to haze him, he was about to break line, whip his big brothers behind, and then get back online. And I'm like, what? And he was adamant. We pledge the right way. What is your thought on the pledge process just overall? Uh, you know, man, I, I, I had an interesting come I'm trying to shut all this stuff now, man, because you're going to hear chimes and chirps and stuff like that. So many phones and stuff around Take here. your time. Yeah. So, uh, uh, you know, I look at things like this, man, and a lot of people don't look at things like this. You know, everything evolves. And so, you know, within the, the Greek community, the Divine Nine community, you have this uh, pecking order, you know, of people that, that crossed in the 80s, people that crossed in the 70s, people that crossed in the 90s. And, you know, in every fraternity and sorority, a lot of times they try to compare what the brothers went through in the 80s with what the brothers went through in the 90s. And you can't compare that because just like the NBA, and this is a, a, a great example, you can't judge the NBA players today by what they did in the NBA in the 90s. You know, when Michael Jordan was coming, when they were clothesline and they were doing all those things because things are evolved. But that doesn't make the players any less talented, mm. you know, because you play from the field that's in front of you. You know, I can't 
play if I was in the NBA. I can't worry about what happened in the, in the eighties. I have to play with what's in front of me today. So I say the same thing about uh, Greek fraternities. You know, when you, your time that you cross is your time that you cross and, and, and you deal with that era and, and the challenges that come with that. And they might not be as severe or as great as what happened in the nineties, but that still shouldn't make you any less uh, of, a, a, of a person or a pledgy or, or, or alpha or Q or, uh, uh, Sigma or whatever fraternity you pledge, Kappa. I don't want to leave anybody out. Nah, you know, you know that is actually a very great answer, and in, in, in it's great perspective. It really, really is. Um, I think so often the, the OGs, no matter what it is, um, you know, I come from the music industry, and you can talk. And in th th this right now is the 50th year in hip hop, and you have a lot of the people who paved the way for so many artists who are making big money today. And they don't give these artists the same credit. They, you know, actually look down on a lot of the artists because what they had to go through to just pave the way so that these artists could cash a big check. So it's very hard. I mean, it's a great perspective you just shared because it's very hard to compare generations. It's very hard to compare different paths because the playing field is, is just not set up the same. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, can you imagine, you know, if we use that 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 uh, measuring stick or that barometer in, in every case, you know, imagine what the slaves would say about these NBA players who can't play because their knee hurt. Like, man, you can't play basketball because your knee hurt? I can't, they cut my foot off and I still tried to run and escape. You understand what I'm saying? I went out and picked cotton with two fingers and you you hollering because your knee is sprained, you can't play basketball? So, you know, I mean, we can, you can use that comparison. It's never ending that comparison. Nah, that's so real, that's so real. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love. Make every move a power move. And I'll catch you all on the next video.